testing it out with season seven. Oh boy, what a terrible way to start season seven <laughs> with me serenading the audience. That's a good way to go from uh, you know three people watching to zero real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season <laughs> season season seven of Thunder Pop. I'm Stephen Presley, and I'm joined in the Thunder Pop Dome by the one and only Jazz One. It's good to be back, y'all. Man, it is good to have you back. It's good to be back with you, Jazz. Nice thunderous applause. <laughs> From the soundboard. Jazz Thank one. You, soundboard. Thank you, soundboard. We love you. We 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 bow to you, soundboard. Uh, and already we got a viewer, Billy. My friend Billy from LA says season seven Billy. up in this ish. We are up in this ish. We are up in this ish, indeed. And guess what? We're going to talk about on this Thunder Pop Extra to open season seven, Jazz One. The D plus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As the great Macho Man Randy Savage would have said, oh, yeah. We got to talk about Disney Plus Day that happened just recently and all the big announcements of Disney Plus Day. Uh, and then to close the show, we're going to talk about the Spider-Man No Way Home, which is the probably the most anticipated movie over the last two years. Would you say that's an accurate statement, Jazz, or am I going overboard? The last two years, that's the most anticipated movie in theaters. Man, I would have to say so, man. Like, I'm pumped for it. Like, during the whole pandemic, like, I've been kind of picky on movies. I've mm -hmm. ventured out to the theater to see. Yeah, I'll, I'll be seeing, uh, you know, the new Spider-Man for sure. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's great. Can't wait. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Yep. Cool beans. It is cool beans. <laughs> It is going to be cool beans for this show, for this Thunder Pop Extra. Let's go ahead and hit the opener and let's get into it. Okay, I lied. Yeah, yeah, here we are for this Thunder Pop Extra <laughs> start of season seven. We love you. Thank you for watching. Drop your comments because that's one of the best things about doing these lives is that we get real time comments. And thank you, Billy, for dropping a comment to break the ice on this. Season season seven warm up kind of sorts or uh, as we're kind of doing a little warm up here. It's like preseason, but it actually is season seven, so it's it's real. It's real. It counts. It counts on our record. <laughs> In the football world. That's what they would say. Okay, so we can get into the Disney Plus announcements. I'm gonna do a little shared screen with you. We're gonna open up an article from IGN that breaks down the list of the the big announcements that happened. Uh, during over the last uh month this was uh oh this has been a few weeks though when was disney plus day was that a few weeks ago uh the 12th i believe yeah yeah so a little under that time disney plus disney plus day date uh 2021 everything announced from star wars obi-wan to the first looks of moon knight she hulk miss marvel here is everything you need to know about this disney plus day of course this is a new thing now they do for the still very young app, Disney Plus, they have their own day. And they have, you know, we have Star Wars Day in May. And now in the in November, we have Disney Plus Day. So <laughs> it's a great time to be a Disney fan. Of course, the big one, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Star Wars original series streaming in 2022, Jazz One. Uh, I know you probably have heard the updates on this show. Uh, well, overall, well, how do you feel about Kenobi? Man, I'm here for it. Like, I, I can't wait. Like, 
Man, if you would have told me when I was like six years old, like seeing Star Wars, you know, for the first time, yeah, I would eventually in 2021 get a Kenobi series. I might not have believed you. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to believe. This is going to be a big reunion. This is a this is a throwback to the early 2000s. Uh, it's almost like getting Blink One Eight Two back together. <laughs> a little early 2000s <laughs> reference. Uh, there, uh, what was another one? Good Charlotte. That's another early 2000s. <laughs> Do you remember how good hip hop there was a there was a golden age of hip hop around 2006, 2006 ish? Oh, remember yeah, turning, remember absolutely. On, remember turning on the radio in 2005, 2006, and it, like, every hip hop song was a was a was a banger. It was a bop, <laughs> yeah. I thought that at the time I knew it too because I had, I was around I had been around long enough to recognize a golden age in any form of media, and at the time I was like this is a, I think this is one of the golden ages of music for hip hop for hip hop. Oh yeah, because you had some I mean you had Jay Z putting out his best work around that time. I mean it's a whole other show, but anyway just just my thought. But another early two thousands reunion is going to happen on Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't know if we're going to get any Jay Z songs. But we are going to get the return of Hayden Christensen. Bro, I can't wait. Like, can't wait. Reuniting with Ewan McGregor as uh, his, you know, that was his, uh, you know, Padua. And he, he was, you know, he was his master. After after Qui-Gon left. You know, then, then he, oh, yeah. He was left in charge of that. But the story, of course, left in a very... At their last meeting was memorable to say the least. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. It's uh it's memes uh that have been gone going for years, and now that's gonna pick up and we're gonna see where things are now. And it's very different <laughs> the, the relationship. But Darth Vader Hayden Christensen is going to be in the Darth Vader suit. We're gonna see him and we're gonna see the two of them together meeting again on screen. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think we're going to see, this is my thoughts right now on Kenobi. I believe that we're going to see Darth Vader without his helmet more than we've ever seen Darth Vader without his helmet in the history of Darth Vader live action. Would you agree or disagree with that thought? Uh, like, I don't know if it was like official <laughs> or maybe like unofficial, like concept art, but yeah, I think I've seen some stuff like with Vader with a partial mask, like yeah. just the, uh, like the mouth and like breathing part and yeah. then just like bald on top. Yeah. You know? Cause why, why else bring back Hayden Christensen to reprise his role as Anakin, AKA Darth Vader, unless you're actually going to use the actor. Oh yeah. And the facial expressions and <clears throat> whatnot, whatnot. So it could be some of the most intense Darth Vader we've ever seen, uh, seeing him without his helmet and seeing that em emotion uh, I'm also really happy to see the redemption for a possible redemption for Hayden Christensen because he's taken so much uh, blowback over the years for, oh, yeah. pe for people. Yeah. For people that maybe thought he wasn't the Anakin Skywalker of their dreams. I know there was always that talk that Leonardo DiCaprio was offered the role who was the, <laughs> who was the it, it, it actor of that time. He may still be the it actor of now. I don't know, but he was the it actor definitely of that time. Cause that was right around the time he ended up doing Titanic and he does the Romeo and Juliet movie. He starts doing a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, later came catch me if you can, but that was years later. But anyway, I mean, some of his, I mean, he Oscar nomination after an Oscar Oscar nomination. Um, but yeah, he, of course he was the, always the story was he was offered the role. He turned it down. Cause he, I don't think he wanted to be typecasted in a star Wars movie, but uh, Hayden Christensen's where they went. And he, he received a lot of blowback over the years. So I'm hoping now in this setting, he gets a chance to redeem himself. Man, I'll tell you one thing with uh, Kenobi and some of the other Star Wars stuff coming out. It's uh, making some of like the Star Wars animation stuff like Clone Wars and Rebels almost yeah. like required viewing to get what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of Anakin and a lot of um, you know, a lot of Anakin Skywalker and a lot of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in Clone Wars um, and their story. And there's more. So we get more backstory of those characters uh, from the uh, anime. 
I know uh, D, uh, Disney Plus Day like talked a lot about like what's coming up. Uh, did you uh, check out some of the stuff that was released here? Uh, that's already out. Yeah. Yeah, we've got so Shang Chi, Shang Chi, sorry, and the Legend of the Ten Rings hit the streaming app for everybody to watch. Uh, also, Jungle Cruise, uh, a new Home Alone movie, which I think is kind of a Home Alone reboot. I'm not totally sure on that. But that also is now available for your holiday viewing for the family. Is that a reboot? Home Alone reboot? I haven't checked it out. Um, like I was happy to like dig into Shang Chi, you know, again. Yeah. Like yeah. I, that was like my first time back in the theater since the whole pandemic. And yeah. uh, to be able to kind of just like really digest it and kind of just like really kind of dig into it, and, you know, pick, pick up those like we call them uh, Easter eggs and stuff mm -hmm. you didn't notice the first time. But, uh, man, the uh, return of the Jeff Goldblum show, uh, man, I've, like, really enjoyed that. Have you uh, watched that? You know, I watched a few of those. I watched the one. You actually liked it then. Bro, okay, here's the thing, man. Like, back when I did the CBS thing uh, in 2019, the yeah. night before, like, I was in a hotel in Baton Rouge to mm -hmm. do that thing with CBS Sports, and I woke up from a dream, and I had to tell people about it. And so in this dream, like, mm -hmm. I had just finished using the restroom. I was, like, washing my hands, and someone knocks on the door. And I'm like, one moment, right? And then I'm drying my hands, and they knock again in my head. I'm like, impatient asshole, right? Like, one moment. And then I go to open the door, and when I open the door, for some reason, I just say Jeff Goldblum. And when I open the door, it's Jeff Goldblum. And I just sit there and I'm saying Jeff Goldblum and every possible emphasis, like Jeff Goldblum, like Jeff Goldblum, like, and I, like probably say that five or six times. And he looks at me, he's like, no one's ever going to believe this. And not like no one's no, not going to believe me, but like no one's going to believe him. Right. And then uh, he walks right past me and gives me the score of the game. The funny thing, like he was right about the yellow shoe part of the score, mm -hmm. but wrong about the Florida part of the score. So every time since then, I've gone to like a public restroom, like, you know, single public restroom, mm -hmm. and someone knocks on the door. I'm like, Jeff Goldblum? Because we live in Austin. Like, it, I, it could happen, you know. So uh, I, I wouldn't even say it was a dream. It was more like a vision. You know, I, Dude, I, I've it, got, the, I've got, I know why you had that dream. I finally figured it out. <laughs> no, I know it's an epiphany. You were there. Of course, people that, that know, you know, that you filmed a CBS segment. Yeah. It was a series they were doing that year where they went around all the, S, the SEC teams, right? Some of the SEC uh, no, teams. just three, uh, Bama, Georgia, okay. and LSU. The and best tailgate, like, the best tailgate experiences in the SEC. Yeah. They covered the three, three of them. And you were the, person that was uh, was picked uh to be the ho to be the host of the most for lsu's tail <laughs> tailgate and you had this you did the, you did it so well i mean you're that piece oh, appreciate that. And, and your job on that and, and people can find it you it's online so go check out jazz yeah, i've got like pinned on uh, my uh twitter at yeah. jazz one it's a great segment. It's a huge budget they filmed it they've got drones the camera a uh, professional camera crew they come in CBS sports and films this segment with jazz and it was amazing. He did such an amazing job. So yeah. So you do that segment and then you had that dream while you were there to film that segment. This is also the LSU national championship year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this is Those 20, ties. 2019, <laughs> 2019. Okay. During 2019. So here, I got the idea why you had the Jeff Goldblum connection. Jeff Goldblum show is about him going out and doing things where he's experiencing uh, he goes, he does a whole episode on one topic Oh yeah, and, and he immerses himself in the experience only the way Jeff Goldblum would do. <laughs> so I know that one of the episodes I watched was one about sneakers, sneaker heads. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. I, I really enjoyed it. And I was really, I learned a lot of stuff about, and I love sneaker culture, but I learned a lot of new stuff from watching that. Like I didn't know that what was involved, the people that, that are custom, make custom builds of sneakers. Oh, I, was yeah, so, I was so imp impressed with their process of how they build a custom. And that's a bucket list thing for me. I, I want to one day 
be rich enough to where I can go see that dude and get my own customs made. <laughs> That's a bucket list to get a custom sneaker. I know there's probably bigger and greater things I should be dreaming about doing, but I'd love to go get my customs made of, of, like, from that guy. But anyway, here's the thing. Jeff Goldblum does something. He does. I did an ice cream episode. He Jeff Goldblumizes the experience. Oh, yeah. Like, Okay, so I think that the intention is Jeff Goldblum is supposed to do an episode on college football tailgating. <laughs> and you are supposed to be the person that's going to 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 show him the, take him on this 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 journey of tailgating and what better situation to put him in is with you at L, at the LSU um in Baton Rouge taking Jeff Goldblum through the experience. To me, that is the trifecta. <laughs> so Jeff, call me, bro. <laughs> so what we've got to do is we have to find out if they, if Disney has a, uh, a, a like a comment box, a virtual <laughs> digital comment box. We need to get your tape to the Jeff Goldblum production <laughs> and say that you propose that they do a tailgating. This is, so this is why I think this happened. Nothing's nothing's on accident. I think that's why it all connect. I mean, what do you think? Are you with me on this? Dude, I, I'm in, bro. So I, I tell the crew uh, that morning after we have a production meeting, I tell them about that. So uh, they have me tell the whole story like on camera. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in New York at CBS Sports, there is video of the whole story. But uh, Oh, man. I wish we had that. We just send that oh, over yeah. to them. But no, but, I think... Uh, I think guess what's going to happen? I think you and Jeff Goldblum are going to do an episode of his show. Bro, did you uh, watch the Under the Helmet, the uh, Legacy of Boba Fett? Oh my goodness! Oh, that is that's amazing, and just doesn't it get you excited for the series for the Book of Boba Fett? Bro, we are like a month and a week out from the Boba Fett series, man. Like, yeah, can you tell I'm up for it? <laughs> oh man, I love it! I love it! And can you? Can you tell that I'm up for it? <laughs> 100, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I can't wait for the Book of Boba Fett. And, you know, think about this. Hawkeye drops tomorrow. We talked about that. So that's one of the more immediate, also, uh, new things that's coming up that's been built up for a couple. We've been building, been hyping that up for a couple months. Anyone that sees Black Widow, that had seen Black Widow, which is also something else now that's available to stream, if you missed that because of COVID and didn't go to the theater to see it, it's available now to stream for everyone that's on Disney Plus, and damn it, we're doing a commercial for them. Like, just yeah. should just pay us first. But yeah, so Black Widow has a I'm not gonna no spoiler here, but in credit scene that really set up a lot for Hawkeye, don't you think? Oh yeah, no Black Widow is a James Bond movie without James Bond, like like the bad guy, like the Bond girls, yeah. like no, <laughs> it's a James Bond movie. The set pieces. It yeah. was a James Bond movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. As far yeah. as like Hawkeye, man, it's like, I tell you, like of any of the Avengers, my interest in Hawkeye is here. And I have a feeling Disney plus Feige, all those guys, yeah. like I, I probably will like watch it tomorrow and yeah. be pumped. Like, uh, yeah. no, no duds so far. They're going to make that character because like, I remember when the Avengers was first announced that they were going to do Avenger movies. Yeah. And I remember my friend, rest in peace to the late, great Dan Murphy, uh, who passed away before we started doing our podcast. Um, but he would have been a tremendous guest on, he was an actor in Austin, local actor. He would have been a tremendous guest on our show, but he, uh, talked about made fun of Hawkeye. I remember before the Avengers came out and said, Oh yeah. What, what does Hawkeye do? Cause we know Thor, we know his superpowers. We know, you know what, what uh Captain America does his powers and we know what Iron Man can do and his abilities. And I'm like, Hawkeye is like, he's got a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's he going to do with his bow and arrow? So I, I remember it was a joke. It was a big joke. And, and they've done a lot. They did a lot more with, with Hawkeye than you could have ever imagined. It was well been well acted, but the series, I agree. They're going to dig more into the ecosystem of that character and we're just like they did with the other series. And yeah, they're going to make us really love some Hawkeye, I think. Yeah, I, mean, they, I, uh, I, I agree. I want to say it was, uh, I was watching it just before we started today. Um, I, I don't know if it was like a, a preview or the trailer, but yeah, it, it, it had my attention. Like, yeah. 
after work, I have a feeling I will be watching that. Looking forward to it. So that's coming. Uh, there was also, of course, we talked about Under the Helmet. Boba Fett, one of the most beloved characters in the history of Star Wars, and he's getting a goddamn TV standalone that's coming out Christmas. It's going to be Under the Tree for you, Jazz One. No, no, it's a few days later. It's like the 29th. It, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be actually okay. Ah, uh, well, we'll get our Christmas gift a little late. <laughs> but, I just got to get through Christmas, and then I get my Christmas. Boba Fett. <laughs> trailer looks good. I think they left a lot out of the trailer because I don't think the movie was finished when they put that teaser together. Uh, you know, I know they're, they've been kind of on the clock. They've been running uh, against time to get that finished because of delays with COVID. But they put sort of something up there that I think was just to get you know people excited. A little teaser. They didn't show much. But enough to for me to say, okay, this is gonna be the show's gonna be fun. Is it the Sopranos in Star Wars? Man, you know, like there was a time where something like that was uh you know being talked about. Yeah, you know, and it's like, okay, kind of look at Boba Fett. Okay, so he's going from like a bounty hunter type role to mm -hmm. more like administration. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's a whole different vibe. And just yeah. like the little bite that they gave us, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't wait to see it. You know, like I'm kind of curious if we're, we're going to see like more huts. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I can't wait. Like, um, yeah, I was a, had a super late pass on like the animated Star Wars, but yeah. as I mentioned when we talked Kenobi just a few minutes ago, like it a lot of the animated stuff really helps you understand a lot of the newer stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, now speaking of Marvel, going back to Marvel, Moon Knight, She-Hulk. She-Hulk was one for me where I was kind of like, I don't know, She-Hulk, really? But the She-Hulk, I'll tell you, that trailer, I can't wait for some She-Hulk. Uh, you won't I mean, like me when I'm angry. <laughs> I mean, okay, I want to ask you a question. I don't. I wish I had say. I wish I had saved the still to show you. You've seen the She-Hulk trailer, I'm sure, at least a couple yeah, times, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, Mark Ruffalo. Reprising his role as as David Banner, incredible the Incredible Hulk. There's a shot. Am I right or am I wrong? Did they they re recreate a shot from the original 1970s TV series that looks like a? Have you noticed this? No, I will have to rewatch it. Go back and watch the scene. It's one of the one scenes with Ruffalo where he's there with the actors, the character, the, the She Hulk, before she turns to She Hulk. And they're in a laboratory, like doctors would be in a laboratory, um, like like David Banner. But they're in this uh, laboratory, and and it looks like he's even doing the pose of, that you would see in the opening of Incredible Hulk, uh, back in the, the 70s version of Incredible Hulk with Lou Ferrigno. So you see that yeah. that stance that Bill Bixby was the actor that played David Banner back then, uh, played it so well. He he had sort of a position where he was leaning. It was the way he was standing, and it was always at the beginning of every show they played that clip in the opening, and then they had that music, and they would show you what happened. Kind of a it was kind of the origin. They told they re reintroduced the origin a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. The show. There's a a shot. I am positive it's it's a nod to the original '70s series. I'm gonna have to put these next time we get together on a show. I'm gonna put a side by side and see if I'm right on this. I don't know if anyone else. I'm sure someone else has noticed this. There's a, so many nerds out there doing shows, <laughs> doing content, doing content. I'm sure so, but I think they were doing a nod to the original show because it's even the shirt he's wearing. I think was the same shirt that they had David Banner wear with the sleeves rolled up. So yeah. Anyway, um, little spoiler here, but for Shang Chi, I'm just going to go ahead and say spoiler coming up for Shang Chi. The end credit scene. Of course, we just talked about Shang Chi a minute ago. It was one of the. It was the first movie that got you out of the out of at the theater during the pandemic. Yeah. The in credit, we see that we see uh Captain Marvel, hologram, and David Banner. And it's the first time we see that David Banner is no longer in his uh Professor Hulk persona that we saw him the last time we saw him, he was Professor Hulk. And now he's back to his alias. What do you think's going on there? Do you think he has now made himself David Banner? And he has made it to where he's completely reversed himself back to David Banner and he's no longer going to be Hulk anymore for a while. Or do you think he's, he still has a way of where now he's been able to control it and he only is Hulk when he wants to be Hulk. I think he's going into therapy. Yeah. 
like which bro, a lot okay, yeah which a here's lot my thing people, bro yeah. like the hulk man it was like man i you know just imagine like you're an avenger man you got these people who are like superhuman and all this then you got this asshole who has rage issues yeah. you know i'm like chill bro you know <laughs> Well, I think a lot of the Avengers went into therapy after the the uh, the la- the end game. Oh yeah, the snap! The, the snap that was a traumatic experience, and like a lot of them, man, therapists are making a killing after the snap. <laughs> I mean, it's like Frank. It's like the Franklin's barbecue of of. Uh, <laughs> of they got lines of people lined up around the therapist office, and they're they're all there. Some of them get, get turned away. At two o'clock, when the therapist is full for the day, it's, it's like oh Franklin. yeah. Does Franklin's barbecue still have lines like that? Did you ever try Franklin's barbecue? Man, there is like so much good barbecue in this town. Yeah, like I don't know if Franklin's is just a good supply and demand, like marketing, yeah. creating, you know, yeah. like yeah. we call it uh, creating interest. Yeah, like the, <clears throat> I understand the lines are part of the experience, but yeah. man. What was it like Sam's barbecue man over on like 12th street? Yeah. You know, like you don't need no tea for their beef. You know, it's like, man, there's so much good barbecue in this town. Like it, it cannot be worth a three hour wait from like in the morning to like noon mm. or whatever. Like, yeah. Like I could be wrong. You know, I, know. I just think Franklin's is a genius marketing yeah. branding. I, I don't believe it can be that good. You yeah, know? I haven't I haven't tried it yet. I had one time I could have tried it because I got I was doing some work and I was over that side of town and they actually didn't have a long line. It was late in the day, but I had already eaten a big lunch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I won't enjoy it as much. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to work. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't do it. Okay. Uh all the Marvel announcements other than She Hulk, we had uh Miss Marvel, uh it's gonna be an MCU series, Moon Knight, Oscar Isaac. Uh, coming out of uh, Star Wars and Dune, just recently he was in Dune, uh, so he's he's getting these huge roles. Tremendous actor, bro. Dune he's, he's, was like Star Wars minus fun equals Dune, and that's not even a bad thing. I'm just saying, it, you know, not everything has to be fun. But right. Dune wasn't fun. It was tense. You yeah, know, it was you know enthralling. Yeah, it, it was so many. Yeah, visually stunning, but visually stunning. It was not fun. Like, it takes the uh, it's it's sophisticated sci-fi. Would you say that's a good accurate? Yeah, accurate? yeah. I mean, I just feel like they were able to do some things that they dreamed of, you know, in the you know, with the original movie, you know. Yeah. Uh, like bringing things to life, but uh, and I mean, I was completely captivated by it but it is just not fun <laughs> like like i said take the fun out of star wars you have dune <laughs> well and yeah you're right vis- performance is amazing actor is amazing in this movie visually stunning uh it's a good point you know was george lucas a bit of like have you ever had a song you were kind of meh on but then you heard a dj put their their magic touch on it and you were oh, saying, yeah. suddenly it was a it was a banger it was a bop oh yeah and you were like oh now i like this song now that this dj has put something on it i or can't think of it live you know it's like yeah okay, it's an okay song but like seeing it in person i'm like oh i get it now well and not to say you were saying that doom was meh you're you're you're, you're saying it's something different than star wars because it, it, yeah. it's, it's it's a different type of sci-fi but uh it's like they took it's like george lucas took dune and he added his, his, like he put some beats to it. <laughs> he's a D, he's a science fiction DJ. Man, as much as like uh, Lucas like sampled like Kurosawa and just like yeah, you know, like yeah, absolutely, yeah. He he was definitely sampling and mashing some stuff up with Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. He was a dude. He was obviously probably a fan of those books. I mean, he didn't have the movie before he made New Hope. But he had the books, and he obviously read the books, and he obviously was inspired by the books, as anyone would tell you. Uh, but Oscar Isaac, man, this guy could be, to me, he he's level uh, as far as actor of a Leo, Leo DiCaprio, of a um, uh, 
was the like other top actors that you know Jack Nicholson, yeah, uh, Denzel Washington, uh, Angela Bassett. I mean, he's on that level for me as far as actors and their capability and their in their performances. And he's not he's not always Oscar Isaac. He can actually play a character because I've seen him in different movies. Did you see the movie with him and the and the fem robot, the fembot robot? No. Oh, you've got to see this movie. To me, it's one of the best movies I've seen in the last 10 years. It's a dystopia, kind of Black Mirror-ish type sci-fi movie. Uh, it's grounded a lot in reality, but it's about this Fembot. It's not that... like a Rodriguez thing, was it? No, I don't think that was Rodriguez. Um, I, I wish I could tell you the name of the director, but it, it came out. This was probably either, I think it was pre-Force Awakens. He made it right before Force Awakens. Oh, gotcha. But he's a totally different person in that movie than what you see him playing in Star Wars and in Dune. He Whereas really like Ryan Reynolds is just Deadpool in every movie he's right, in. Right. This this Oscar Isaac character, you, you're like, oh man, he really transformed himself. Well, Joaquin Phoenix. That's so I can really he's always oh, got a yeah. little you know, Joaquin Phoenix character's always got a little bit of an edge to it, but it's a, it's different. Oh yeah. Like, like when he played Johnny Cash, he was Johnny Cash for me. Oh, 100. But then when he was the Joker, he was the fucking Joker for me. Man, uh, uh Jamie Foxx is like that. Another actor that can do uh those those you know, he's going to play Mike Tyson. And he I think he's going to nail Mike Tyson cuz I heard him do the voice of Mike Tyson on a radio show and I was like and he was really hyping up that movie, the Mike Tyson movie that he's going to do. Uh, he's going to probably nail Mike Tyson. You're going to think you're watching Mike Tyson after about <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes in that movie. I agree with Jamie Foxx. Speaking of Jamie Foxx, we'll talk about him because he's coming back to another Disney release that we were talking about earlier. But what do you think about Moon Knight? Where are you on Moon Knight? Is this one of the deep cuts? Because I know you mentioned when we, we reviewed Suicide Squad, you're like, oh man, there's some real deep cuts in this movie, like Polka Dot Man. And they're not like the my go-to favorite dc villains or dc yeah. char dc characters uh but where are you at with moon knight do you stay at the or is your stance similar or do you are is because it's the mcu you have a little more you know trust and openness to it well I, i've heard uh moon knight kind of described as like the uh marvel batman okay you know that's got me interested enough like i will check it out you know uh, I was checking the trailer out and, uh, yeah, the trailer's look, looking interesting, you know? Yeah. Uh, just the fact, I think in the trailer, it was kind of getting across the idea. He wasn't sure like what was reality. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of into it for that. Now we'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. I mean, definitely good cast. You know who else, you know, what else is pretty exciting about this show or interesting about this show is Ethan Hawke. Is in oh, this shit. damn is in this damn show. He's he's the baddie. He's playing oh, the baddie, damn. and that's a real interesting casting because it's. I remember one time we did a show and you said Ethan Hawke. If you see it, if you watch a Richard Linklater movie and McConaughey is in it, it's or Jack Black's in it. It's going to be one of the movies he did to make some money, so he could go back to making <laughs> making. He could, he could go back for a while and make some more indie films. Yeah, yeah, he does it one of those like movies. Yeah, link later, man. I, I think he makes movies specifically for me, and then he'll go do a, like a Hollywood movie, School of Rock, you know, yeah. a Jack Black movie, and then he will make something like what was it, Boyhood, where they yeah. shot the film like for like two <laughs> weeks for like twelve years or something. And I was like, man, this is kind of mind blowing. Then Waking Life and Slacker and all that. But yeah, yeah, then it's like he'll drop some Hollywood stuff. So I'm not mad at it. He's kind of like, to me, he's kind of the Beck of movies. Like, think about Beck back in his heyday. He was a guy that could drop something that was a college radio, like, just did it for the art, did some weird shit on it. Yeah. Put some, put some instruments in it that you don't know. Like, what did he just do with that song? It is totally different. And then he could put a radio song together just the same and get a number one hit. Oh yeah. So I think that's kind of like with Linklater. He can make your if you want the Hollywood movie, I can make you the Hollywood movie. I'll do it maybe once every ten years to pay off like my house or <laughs> uh, you know stuff whatever, or to make some money just to put in the bank so I can go another ten years of just making the movies I want to make, which are you know more you know 
story driven and kind of grounded in reality type movies that are damn entertaining that he makes. But Linkletter, yeah. So Linkletter, when he goes to those movies that are the movies that he makes for you, um, that are those kind of a lot of Austin based movies, a lot of Texas. I mean, they're always usually set in Texas most of the time. He does a lot of movies set in Austin. Um, but he, yeah, he does those movies a lot of times with Ethan Hawke. And that's kind of what Ethan Hawke has become is the guy that's going to be in all the Richard Linkletter movies. And so suddenly it's a real surprise to see him pop up in the MCU. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I'm sure he's a guy kind of think I, for me, I feel like I get the vibe with him. He's kind of a think out of the box guy. He doesn't, he works to make a living, but he doesn't necessarily have to make 20 million a movie. Oh yeah. And I think that when they brought this to him, he was like, it's got to be uh, cool and, and something about it. it's got to be like where I can really still use my acting chops and it can be weird and funny or funky and dark and, and I can do something a little different, still make a good check. Call it, you know, they got Owen Wilson to come in and do Loki. That was another one. You wouldn't expect Owen Wilson to pop up in the MCU. Yeah. Like, so, I, kinda, I, like, I couldn't even believe it was him. Like it, he had like no Owen Wilson like energy. Yeah. In Loki. Yeah. It could be that way with Ethan Hawke. He may say, oh, this is cool because I can do something. You won't even know it's me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they're making the, the Batman with um, the guy from Twilight, uh, Bat Robert Pattinson. Yeah. The Batman. And that one has um, Colin, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Let me get his name right. That, that actor is playing the Penguin. Have you seen pictures of him as the Penguin? No. They got so much prosthetic on him, you wouldn't know it was it was him. <laughs> I mean, they it's like he totally to totally transformed for the role. And a lot of people were asking the question. A lot of people thought he looked like Richard Cl Richard Richard Kine Klein. <laughs> you know that actor I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Comedic kind of comedy comedic. <laughs> yeah, he looks more like him than he does Colin Farrell. And they were like, well, why don't they just get Richard Co Richard Klein to play <laughs> Penguin? Because that's what he looks like. So it could be like that with Ethan Hawke in this movie. He might be transformed so much. And this is like a him for him. It's going to be like getting paid to cosplay and play a, 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 Mar a Marvel, a Marvel villain and not no one even be able to recognize him in the movie. Uh, but oh, anyway, yeah. that, that one's real intriguing. Uh, also a one division spinoff Agatha. That was new, new. That was, that was some of the new news that we didn't know about. Also Marvel zombies, which is in a way is kind of a spinoff of the what if, that was one of the most popular uh, what if episodes on, on social media, on internet. What do you think about zombie Avengers jazz? You saw that episode. what did you think about it? I have the same feeling about Marvel zombies as I do about walking <clears throat> dead type stuff. Like there was no, <laughs> like I'm from Louisiana. Like there's no voodoo, man. You know, like without voodoo, you can't have zombies. Like, yeah. no, no, I, I'm not here. For, I, I will watch it. But I'm not here for it. <laughs> yeah. We have a couple of comments <clears throat> coming in. Uh, Facebook user, righteous. The boys are back in town. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> that applause is for you, Jazz. I wouldn't give myself applause. That would be <laughs> that would be pretty embarrassing to do that. Uh, also, uh, my cousin says hi from Illinois. Chelsea, thank you for hey. for for, for, for peeking in on the uh, the stream today. Good to see you. And there's there she is with her uh, husband, and they're a lovely couple, handsome couple there. And uh, she's got a new baby too. So at the oh. house, you know, so they've been pretty, pretty busy uh, with the baby, I'm sure. So I'm sure that they got the baby down for a nap, and she's had a few minutes to to check in on us. <laughs> I remember that stage of everything. Um, Oh yeah, so yeah, get back to this. Uh, we got so Zombie Avengers, Agatha. Now this one's kind of surprised me. Were you surprised they're going to have an Agatha standalone? I don't know. Like I, I thought she was like a really strong character. Yeah, and kind of like stole uh, WandaVision in some ways. Yeah, that's that's fair. I mean, she she did do a great job with that role. Now she's an actress. That can that can be and feel and look different in different roles because after one division I I didn't I wasn't as I wasn't familiar with her past work I looked up some stuff because I was so impressed with like you said I was so impressed with her yeah. work on one division 
and what she had done. I was curious what else she had been in. And I started to dial her up and find her on other places. And I was like, man, she totally transformed herself for one division. Oh goodness. And her play and where she, how she played that role. So I'm, I'm happy that I feel like she put herself in a lot more people's radar by just like with Sim Lou, uh, getting into the Marvel universe. We knew him from Kim's convenience. But oh, if you're yeah. not, if you're not a Kim bit, that's a reference for us. Kim, <laughs> Kim's if you're not a Kim bit. You didn't know Sim Lou probably, or you were not from Canada. You didn't know Sim Lou. Uh, and he, he had been on a few other things, but, but yeah, now everybody knows who he is. He just hosted Saturday night live jazz. Yeah. I was so that? happy. Yeah. I was so happy to see him on there, man. You know, uh, yeah, I think our paths crossed in 20, uh, 18, uh, yeah. 2019. No, yes. You have a photo. You have a photo yeah. with him. Yeah. So like the, the Star Wars universe, the Marvel universe, and the Thunder Pop universe all crossed in that photo. <laughs> yes. And you also, of course, that's when you met Paul Sung Lee because both Kim, yeah, Kim yeah. Convenient stars, two of the stars, were in uh, in Austin for South by Southwest. Was that 2018? Man, I, I have so much confusion Somewhere. with the pandemic. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't tell what was yeah. a couple years ago versus a few years ago because, like, yeah. well, one, 2019, I don't even count it. Like, I don't even count 2020 in my age. It's like the snap. We were all exactly, snapped. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened that year? It was like the snap. I was like, I'm, I'm yeah, fuzzy time on it. Just stopped, you know. Oh boy, it's yeah, it's a, it's a time where we all were doing this. Just a, a little Vanderbeek in there, uh, for sure. During that, during that stretch, um, uh, it's not living its best life. Uh, it's not living its best life. Not all right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what a lot of us were saying in 2020, um, for sure. Uh, quite a, for quite a bit, actually. Um, so yeah, we got that, but strong actor, she may have earned that show by her performance. Maybe that wasn't even going to be a show, but she was so good on that show. And I have a feeling a lot of that is where they'll get these spinoff shows. And that's, that's where spinoff shows have always come from is a strong character. That was a standout character that they were like, maybe we could do a show with this character. And I think that's a continuing thing. By the way, the other Jim for friend from friends. The other Jim, I don't know if you know yeah. this re reference, but that appeared on One Division. And that actor, I should be able to remember his name by now. But you know the actor that played the agent in uh, yeah. Ant-Man? Ant He's back for One Division. He's become one of the breakout characters. They've A lot of people have called for him to have his his Marvel spinoff, which could still happen. But he's getting a new show. Have you heard about his new show? This is a no. Netflix, Netflix announcement. Okay, this is kind of interesting. This could be really good because he's a funny guy. He's getting a sitcom or comedy a sitcom. It's going to be based on the real last blockbuster video that still exists that they did the documentary. Did you watch the last blockbuster? Yeah, I want to say I saw that documentary with Kevin Smith was on quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. So they made a doc. Netflix made a documentary about it, and now on the back of the success of the documentary, they're doing a, a comedy situation comedy, and he's going to be the one of the main uh, stars of that show. He's going to be running that last blockbuster, his character, and so it's going to be called just Blockbuster. So, and he was also Jim on Friends. <laughs> if he, that reference for real Office fans will know, the real OG Office fans will know what I'm talking about when I, I'm saying that. Uh, oh that, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that what dream ups? No. Well, he no, that was a prank. Okay, that yeah, I remember that. The real Jim sent him into full Dwight to make him think he had went crazy. <laughs> he acted like he was really. It was like a multiverse Jim. Like he suddenly stepped into a multi <laughs> the the office multiverse. Yeah, and and uh, and so yeah, they 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 all everybody went along with it, and they they had uh, Dwight going crazy on that episode because he. Pretending to be Jim for, I, I know I thought about playing that joke on somebody of like, I'm supposed to meet somebody and send somebody and do that to them. But then I was like, you know, I could get someone beat up in real life. <laughs> like I could literally get someone's ass kicked if I don't do that. Or I could get the police called. I mean, if I do that, execute that the wrong way, <laughs> those things always fly on television. But I don't know if you don't, 
if you don't play that right, you could get someone that could could be ready to throw down. You gotta be careful. Uh, so yeah, so Agatha getting the series. I'll get one more. I'm gonna hit on Marvel before we we go back. To, we go and close out with some Spider Man No Way Home talk. The uh, the the uh, X Men '97, which is based off of the X Men '1997 animated series that ended in the late '90s, that was very popular in the late '90s. Uh, that they're going to do a, a revitalization of that. They're going to get a continuation, and they're going to do it just like the '90s series. The aesthetic look style for the most part some people have hinted that they hope that the writing is going to be uh, modernized a little bit because uh, what happened apparently i know i saw a video on on um um the black gay geek comic there's a buddy of mine on instagram he yeah. did this video where all the female leads on that animate were always getting uh their their ass knocked down it was only the female leads he said not the male leads the male leads would be would be standing up and he, he showed a montage of all the female characters getting knocked to the ground by whatever the baddie they were taking on. And he said, why was it always the female? And he's like, is that going to be in the, <laughs> so he, he was basically, his point was everybody's excited about the 97, 97 X-Men, but I'm not as excited as because of this. So I think that's probably something they're going to course correct. Oh, if yeah, I, if absolutely. I had to guess, if I had to guess, and they may even be, it may even be a thing. Like I haven't gone to see if there's other people have created content referencing that but if it is something that's a thing online i'm sure that that they know about it and they may even put a little like like a joke in there about it i would think okay. kind of like kind of like they did with the new master universe they put some kind of winks and jokes in there to kind of make fun of the the legacy some of the things that were sort of laughable about the original oh yeah i, I absolutely. thought they didn't yeah. take themselves too serious they kind of you know had had a little fun with it um and so that's that's cool but anyway they're gonna be yeah there's gonna be a new x-men at least one more season of x-men 97 um that there a lot of people are i know are really excited about the 90s x-men coming back so big announcements another thing that will eventually end up on disney plus i think but no way home spider-man no way home as we we alluded at the beginning of the show we talked about the uh, spider-man no way home this is going to be a lot of fun um and actually i got a i got a clip from the trailer I just got a steal. Uh, that's, that's a real clip from the trailer, as you can see. <laughs> uh, Doctor Strange and Peter Parker, uh, Sp a.k.a. Spider-Man. Uh, and here's a real side-by-side. Uh, -side. Now, the last trailer, we see MJ possibly falling to her doom and death. And then we see in the um, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, that was only two movies, we see his love who did fall to her death. And that was that, that, that I remember that really got me in my feels when that happened. It's a very emotional scene. So we see that recreated looks almost like shot for shot. The same scene. Oh yeah. A lot, a lot of speculation on that is that, okay, let's just get to the, the elephant in the room. Okay. It's been, why is Aunt May getting younger every movie. Yes. <laughs> why is he getting younger in every movie? What is he doing? Is it, is this some of that baby blood stuff? <laughs> <laughs> they do in Hollywood. No, I am. Was oh, Aunt May like his aunt, like Uncle Ben's uh, wife? Oh yeah, Aunt May, like, Aunt May. Yeah, you know, it's like in the early Spider-Man, she's like geriatric, and then it's yeah. like gets younger. Like oh, every, yeah, you know, iteration of of uh, Spider-Man. Oh yeah, the evolution of Aunt May. Yeah, because she started yeah. off as like a real granny in the first one, and then she got a little bit younger. In the second, the, the second reboot, and then this one, I mean, she's like, you know, hot cougar. Yeah, like 40s, like Aunt May. Like, and I'm not talking about 1940s. I'm talking about like 40 cougarish. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, brings all the boys to the yard, including uh, Tony, <laughs> Tony Stark in the first movie. Could not stay away from Peter Parker's. I mean... I know he really was trying to mentor Peter Parker, but he yeah. really well, he really just wanted to smash with Aunt May. What, I mean, he was really using Peter Parker to get to Aunt May. Let's let let's. I mean, am I right or am I am I wrong on this? <laughs> um, Paige Bachhorn, thank you for joining. Uh, dropping a comment asked us who was Aunt May in the Andrew Garfield movies. A good question. I'll have to look that up. Do you know jazz right offhand? 
Yeah, I can't remember, but uh No, yeah. was it Sally Field? What that's Sally it? Field. I think that's the one where Sally or was Sally Field Aunt May and no Sally Field was Aunt May in one of those. Either in the in the now I'm confused if she was the Aunt May in the Toby Maguire. I'll look it up. I'll look it up while we uh, at some all point all I'm saying is the current Aunt May doesn't have an AARP card. Not yet, no. Not at all. <laughs> She's got a different card. She's got a card of hotness. <laughs> and now Tony's no longer in the picture. Happy John Favreau is, is he's hanging out at Peter Parker's house quite a bit. And it's not because he wants to be friends. I mean, he sure he wants to take care of Peter, but he also wants to take care of Peter. <laughs> where's my rim shots? God damn. Where's my rim shot here? I get I got a rim shot. I get a rim shot here for this. Come on, rim shot. I need to be able to voice command these sound effects. Damn it. I don't know. I, I can get myself a, a laugh track or something. Okay, here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um yeah, so yeah, so now happy John Favaro is the one that's uh not the Toby Maguire. So I think Sally Field, actually, I think Sally Field was Aunt May. Or am I getting Sally Field? No, Sally Field was was Henry Cavill Superman's mom. She's in she's in the DCEU, isn't she? Maybe. Okay. I'm gonna look uh, this up. Okay, I'm gonna look this up. Jazz, somebody Google it. Somebody Google it. <laughs> okay, Jazz, talk talk while I look this up. <laughs> Aunt May, Andrew Garfield. I'll just put that in. That should get us answer this question okay this was the answer was no wait it was it was sally field so sally field has been aunt may and she's been uh, a clark kent's mom now crossover she's crossed over she's double dipped she's one of the actors <laughs> there'll be a trivia question someday name an actor that was a marvel movie and a dc movie one would be michael keaton Who's done both? He's double dipped. Uh, ben Aff, uh, Ben Affleck, because he was Daredevil in, in a standalone one movie, and now he's been Batman. Sally yeah. Field, Sally Field, she played Aunt May, and then now she's all she was also now she's uh, Clark Kent's mom in the DCEU. Man, I remember was that Michael Keaton was in that movie what Birdman? Yeah, you know what she, she said. I thought Diane. I I'm sorry. I thought. I thought Diane Lane was someone's mom. You know, you might be right. Maybe Diane Lane is, is, uh, I think you're right. I think Diane Lane is Henry Cavill's mom, Superman's mom in the DCEU. I'm getting them, I'm getting them confused. Yeah, you're right. Diane Lane. Good, good call on the Diane Lane. <laughs> oh, but Michael Keaton, you said Michael Keaton, Birdman? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was kind of disappointed that wasn't like a, uh, biopic of like Cash Money Records. Like, Michael Keaton's playing Bat, you know, Birdman. <laughs> like, like who's playing Wheezy? You know, who's playing? <laughs> you went to that. You went to yeah. that movie not knowing. You thought you were going to see that that, that yeah. bio. Yeah, uh, I'm like all into cash money. Like I'm from Louisiana. I'm like, oh, this is not at all what I thought. <laughs> it turned out to be much different, didn't it? It was a much different movie. <laughs> Man, that reminds me when we went to go see, uh, what was it, uh, The Rise of Skywalker, and I go into the theater, and, like, man, all the aliens look like cats, and then they started singing and, you know, doing, like, choreography, and then I realized I was in the wrong theater, <laughs> and it was cats. <laughs> yeah, that was another one that was a big, big surprise, was it? Yeah, I was not expecting Star Wars to go that way. Yeah, you know, like this was. is a this is a turn in a direction I didn't expect <laughs> them to go with with the sequel trilogy. All these cat aliens? I don't get this. Like I haven't seen these cat aliens in any other movie except that one episode of uh, Clone Wars. <laughs> I bet, I bet, yeah, I bet you're. But you're such a Star Wars fan, you stuck it out for a little while. Hoping... <laughs> Until you're like, you turned around and asked someone, "Is like, what are the lightsabers going to show up? <laughs> I haven't seen any force being used. 
exactly. <laughs> no force users and no lightsabers in a Star Wars movie. I mean, come on. <laughs> I think I think there now there has been a Star Wars movie. Well, no, even a solo, a Star Wars story finally has a lightsaber in that movie as well, even though it wasn't focused on Jedi's because because of um, um Yeah, yeah. Arth Maul shows up and we see we finally it's like almost like the you know it was kind of out of place that he opened his lightsaber and you're like, I don't understand him opening up the lightsaber now, but it's almost like Star Wars didn't want to Lucasfilm didn't want to end their streak of lightsabers in an actual Star Wars movie. So they're like, oh, we yeah. gotta we gotta come up with a lightsaber to be opened up. It's like we can't have a Star Wars movie without a lightsaber, even for one scene. Because they, they cover lightsabers in Rogue One, didn't they? Yeah, I want to say so. Um, and I'm hearing like rumors with the uh, Boba Fett show that Kira uh from Solo may show up. And Ooh. if you remember in, at the end of Solo, where were they going? Oh to do a job for <laughs> oh. Right here. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's what we pay money, pay the big money for. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how it goes. Uh, I think I've also heard rumors of a uh, mall uh, show or movie. I like, can see and, that. You know, yeah. there's like so many uh, rumors, but man, I'm like I said, mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Yeah, no, I, I'm all, I'm in with that too. Yeah, Paige said Diane Lane. I think you're right. I do as Diane Lane in DC and, and Sally. So Sally field did not double dip. She definitely could have been a good at aunt may Sally field. I'm sure she was looked at her headshot was probably on the table at some point as a consideration for aunt may, but yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a, uh, pretty cougarish, uh, aunt may And the next, the next one, it's going to be like, I mean, aunt may is going to be like 30. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have, yeah. Uh, she's just my aunt by marriage. <laughs> yeah. The next one, I mean, it's, I mean, they're going to have whatever the young actress of the day is, a 30-year-old young actress of the day is going to be, um, you know, who was the one that played uh, Tanya Harding? The actress that played Tanya Harding? She's going to be the next Aunt May. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, she's she's getting the role. <laughs> and the next re reboot, she's going to be Aunt, she's gonna be Aunt May. So, yeah, so the, the big elephant in the room, but there's that elephant in the room. The other elephant in the room, as you know, people have been speculating for months, if not years. They've made they've made memes. Well, I've made memes. They've made fan fan trailers of three Spider Man in this movie. Jazz one, the multi oh, yeah. the multiverse of Spider Man, like we saw in the Loki. We had the multiverse of Lokis. Spider Man, not Spider Man, but Spider Man, bringing back the one and only Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Three Spider Man in this movie. There's also been people like well. Don't don't get too much in the head cannon, as you would say, because you, you could get disappointed. I say even if it only happens as an end credit, we're getting three Spider Man men in this movie. I've already seen enough clips of Andrew in interviews where he seems to kind of be like he's trying to hide something. Like when they ask the yeah. question, he looks uncomfortable, which is the first sign anyone's ever studied interrogation knows that that's a sign of someone's kind of like. They get uncomfortable and they freeze up a little bit and they're kind of like trying to look around. So there there's, it, it just makes sense. It adds up. It's a piece to the puzzle because if they're bringing in the multiverse, they've already acknowledged multiple characters of one character with Loki that could be possible. And they, they're willing to go there with that. It just seems like the, the ultimate is to have the three Spider-Man eventually come together. Do you think that we, could you think, but what do you think about this? You think it's, it's, we need to be careful with our expectations or you think it's, it's happening. Get ready, get your tickets on, on the day the tickets are going on sale. I'll be surprised if it doesn't happen, but, uh, yeah. man, it's like to me, like, they've already kind of covered this with, uh, like yeah. into the spider verse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's in that. It's like the best Spider-Man movie so far. And that was like that, totally, that's totally under my radar. No, that's totally and, uh, fair to say that. It's yeah. totally fair. And if they borrow anything from that, you know, and the way they kind of showed the uh, whole Spider-Verse and that, yeah. I mean, if they can bring some of that into live action, yeah, I'm about that. The uh, big thing, of course, we were talking about Disney Plus earlier. I have a meme. <laughs> Netflix and chill 
Disney. Now it's now jazz. It's Disney and Thrust. <laughs> this was me on, on on Disney Plus Day. I was. <laughs> it's Disney and Thrust. It's get that. I'll be sure on and play some Disney Plus. <laughs> Little nineties. Get the key sweat out and play some. <laughs> and baby, you know how you really turn me on? Put on the Disney Plus. <laughs> that was awkward, wasn't it? That, that that'll be the first. That's a, a, a seven seasons of this show from audio to doing a live stream. I don't think anyone has ever gyrated and grinded <laughs> on the show. That's a first. Even seven seasons in, we can we can cover new ground. <laughs> well, how did the I'll Be Sure song go? Night and day? Was it night and day? The I'll Be oh, Sure? Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a, you're serious. You, we're getting serious song, isn't it? When you bust that out. <laughs> No, oh, was it Key Sweat? Nobody. <laughs> oh yeah, to me it's Key Sweat, and I'll and I'll be sure too. But yeah, you get the Key Sweat out. It's we're getting serious. Get that nasally voice going. <laughs> oh yeah, nineties slow jam. Did you ever listen to the slow jam radio? Bro, I, I I used to be a member of Jodeci. I you know I was like the third Thompson twin. I was uh, in Color Me Bad for a while. I thought that was you in Color Me Bad. Mustard, mustard colored suit, right? No, I was just right before that. Okay, before they got, before they bust out the mustard color suits. Exactly. Yeah. Eight haircuts. I miss my window by that much, over skin, and over. Skinny mustache. Walking with a cane. 20 25 year old dude walking with a cane with, with no prop with no disability or any issues it's just a, it's just a prop it's an accessory it's like it's just because i'm pimp i've got my cane oh exactly oh my goodness uh oh yeah plus and tr plus and thrust <laughs> boom 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 that's what it should be is plus and thrust <laughs> Have a sip of this. <laughs> oh, I need to cool down. All this plus and thrust talk. I like it. Plus and thrust. We got it right here. Isn't the plus and thrust is coming up with with the, with the um, Hawkeye tomorrow, <laughs> and then in a month, a little over a month, we got Boba Fett. We're we're plus and thrust. Oh yeah. Oh man. So uh, no way home. Another thing with no hell, no way home is this is supposed to be the last of this trilogy, but not the last of Tom Holland's Spider-Man because he's supposed to be appearing in, in other movies going forward. There's talk of him. What do you think about this stuff with crossing over with the Sony stuff? Because they made the Venom movies, the second one with mixed reviews, uh, but those are supposed to cross over with with Tom Holland Spider Man. Everything the MCU seems to do. I mean, even when they make a their version, their their version of a bad movie is usually still better than a than a than a decent DC movie. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about? I mean, at least DC EU like recently st recent stuff. Uh, but what do you think about that? Do you have a? Are you a little worried about that? That that could taint kind of how how good these movies have been in the MCU by trying to cross over into these Sony. Man, I tell you, like, to me, they're trying to, like, find their own lanes, you know? It's just, like, I know at some time, I think uh, Spider-Man would be kind of outside of Marvel again. Yeah. And uh, I know they're talking about, like, stuff like the, you know, not Spider-Verse as in the movie Spider-Verse, but, you know, it's like, what is it, Morbius? Um, yeah, Morbius yeah, is coming out. Which is yeah, which you know, a bad guy. Well, kind of anti-hero slash bad guy, yeah. you know, in the uh, whole spider realm, uh, Spider-Man realm. And uh, then it's like Venom and Carnage and stuff. And yeah. I have a feeling they're going to try to create a little bit of their own, you know, uh, Spider-Man, you know. Verse. You, yeah. Their own live action Spider-Man verse. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's like, I think they're trying to do some different movies, like the Morbius one. Yeah. I mean, looks kind of like horror movie-ish. Yeah, you know? it's got, it's a horror, it's yeah. kind of, it feels yeah, more so, horror movie-ish, yeah. You know, it's like, if they find like different ways, you know, uh, I mean, I just, like you said, I love DC characters, but Marvel stories, and, um, you know, it's just like, it seemed like DC was trying to play catch up with their whole DC EU, yeah. you know, to the Marvel universe. And it just felt like, you know, that, I don't know, that Johnny come lately type thing, you know, it just DCU, DCU could have been a lot better than it, than it has been. Like yeah. to me, it's like DC, like more, it finds it's weird, you know, side, you mm-hmm. know, doom patrol. Like a great know, show. Yeah. Yeah. Marvel doesn't have anything Terrific like show. Doom Patrol. And yeah. I like I'm digging Doom Patrol, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. I really I don't know. I, I kind of root for DC, but yeah. uh, I've just been enjoying the Marvel stuff like much more. Yeah. Yeah. They, they more consistency for sure and more cohesive. Yeah. Cohesive with it with the universe in general so far they've been, been able to keep everything kind of syncs well um okay i got another one for you we talked about you mentioned into the spider verse and the animate and that's going to be its own verse as well because they're doing more of those animates with that version of spider-man miles yeah. morales and he's going to get even spinoffs of that i think those guys that made that film did such a great job they're they're going to have their own like verse of that but miles morales there's been some spec people have speculated that he might even show up in this movie because that's that could be the surprise. Now it's gotten to the point where everybody just assumes and expects that we're going to get Andrew and Toby in some capacity, whether it's all throughout the movie and a a full full on like team up, or whether it's them showing up at the right time just to help out, but or an in credit situation. But there's been talk about that Miles could be the one that is a surprise that he maybe he is maybe he ends up being an in credit. And the, and Marvel MCU has proven that they can keep a secret on a casting until they unveil it. They've proven oh, that. Yeah, absolutely. They've done. They've done that recently. So we we will. They might. Maybe they they pull this off again. And they've cast in Miles Morales, and he's already in the uh, in the on the film. So what, oh, what do you yeah. think? What do you think? Would you like to see that? And do you think that could happen? Man, I think he's a really good character, you know. I mean, yeah, and what it's all into the Spider-Verse, like, I would love to see, like, a, a live-action uh, you know, version of that character. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually, just a matter of when. It's, it's it's too much of a, it's a very popular character, and at this point, it's just, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of whether it's going to happen, it's just a matter of when it's going to happen. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to see that. Uh, been here. I read reports uh, this past week that Tom Holland's Peter Parker is now going to be kind of the the anchor where Tony Stark's Iron Man used used what he used to be for he was for several years with yeah. Marvel. They're going to lean on on Tom Holland's Spider Man now to be that that same type of character, which will be a little different because the character is very different from from Tony Stark because Tony Stark was the tech mogul uh, zillionaire. That had access to all this this you know gadgetry and technology that that pushed the Avengers projects projects um, forward um, and with the tech and with Tom Holland Spider Man it's a very different character so I'll be very interested to see how they how they pull that off in making him I think as far as the character itself it's a strong character. And it's well well done by the actor, so I could see why. And obviously, Spider Man is is the IP that has that clout oh, uh, yeah. for, for Marvel to be that character that pops up, you know, uh, in a lot of places. But it'll be a very different vibe from what Tony Stark how he was used. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I can't wait. Uh, what's the release date on that? Uh, the exact release date on No Way Home. No Way Home will be out on. Uh, it's coming. You know, it's a Christmas holiday. I think it's going to be kind of in that space right before the Christmas. Not very far off. No Way Home will come out on December seventeenth. So it's getting that Star Wars spot. The Star Wars got 
for the sequel trilogy. All three, uh, all three. I'm releases. getting a Spider Man movie and Boba Fett. Like, I'm here. Oh, for this it. stretch is the reason why we're back to work today. Because there's too much, <laughs> there's too much to talk about. We were on a break from the live stream for a bit. Jazz was was off, you know, doing some Jedi training. <laughs> and he's, he came back and learned some new force for uses of the force that he's, he's going to use when the time is right. Um, I was out working on some other projects and, you know, eating popcorn and laying on the couch, but it, <laughs> projects, but anyway, yeah, no, it is thunder pop. There's popcorn on the screen. Of course, I'm going to eat popcorn and lay on the couch. That's what I do. That's what I'm good at. No, but yeah. So yeah. So there, there's going to be that, that thing, you know, with, with that stretch is why we got to get back to work today. Cause there's too much to talk about in the next oh, month, 100, bro. Mo- month and a half. We've got, like you said, tomorrow Hawkeye and yeah, the first MCU live action, in a couple months that we've had. And yeah, I'm just like, how is Marvel going to make me care about Hawkeye? Yeah. If they do that, I mean, I believe, I believe in their ability to do that. I believe in their ability. I want to see Ronan at some point, like real, because we, you know, they, they, they talk, you know, he left and he was Ronan, but we didn't see very much of him as Ronan in the movies. We know that he, we know he spends a significant amount of time off as Ronan, which to me is a, 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 a even more interesting part of that character than Hawkeye. Uh, So at some point I do want to see some Ronan, but you know how they're going to make you care about that character is, is good storytelling. Oh yeah, absolutely. Man. They're gonna build. They're gonna start building that universe like they did with Falcon and Winter Soldier, and they did with One Division. They're gonna start building the fuck out of that universe from the first episode. Oh then, yeah, that's that's how I expect them to do it. Well, and then man, gonna, that's, I, a, that's a nice looking cup you have. Oh man, what we have here? You could go to the Thunder Pop shop. A little plug here: the Thunder oh, yeah. Pop. Can Thunder you Pop. find hats like that and shirts like that? At the Thunder Pop shop, you can get these <laughs> cups, which are, you know, ten nice little tin cups, and you can get these caps, and we have coffee mugs, and we have these T-shirts, and we have boxers, and we have other undergarments, uh, yoga pants. Yoga pants, Jazz you One. You can get, oh, man, now I got to start doing yoga. <laughs> Yoga pants with the Thunder Pop logo. Get some for your 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 significant other for Christmas, the holidays. It's great. It's a great. Gift. Oh, they make great Christmas gifts. They make excellent Christmas gifts. Imagine that, Jazz like One. You could wear them to go see Spider Man. <laughs> you could literally put on those Thunder Pop <laughs> yoga pants, and you could go uh, head over to the theater and see Spider Man No Way Home, and you would be, you know, that's when you know. The shit is getting real. Oh, yes, things getting serious. Dude, did you hear what I said? The shit just got real. There you go. The shit is getting. There you go. We got it. We got it. Oh, my goodness. So, Jazz One, yes. you're, you're, you're ready to go for Spider Man No Way Home, getting the tickets. What is one thing that you that maybe we haven't talked about, about no way home that you think could happen in no way home. We know Dr. Strange is in this. He's in this, in it significantly. Is there going to be some course? I mean, they like to mix things up. They like to surprise us. They don't want to give us something we're not expecting. Is that Dr. Strange we're actually seeing in the trailer or is that a variant Dr. Strange? Oh man, I, I, I hear you. Like, I think there's something that they have not shown their hand at all. On. Yeah. That yeah. it's just going to be like some mind blowing stuff. Yeah. And, you know, sometime after the 17th, we're going to have to do uh, like a spoiler, you know, version of the, yeah. uh, you know, discussion of the sh- of the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll have a, we'll have a, uh, a definitely a, 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 after the screening, we're going to get back on and we're going to, you know, break it down and do a spoil, very spoiler, really spoil, spoil filled um, rundown on the film. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, so it's a date, Jazz One. I'll see you on. Somewhere after the seven, a little after the seventeenth, <laughs> get back together and we'll connect and we'll be here for some No Way Home talk, and um, we'll be at home talking about No Way Home. Um, uh, Paige said, "I need more Black Widow in my life." 
and and she said uh she said and peter is so young and naive that's that's the thing and that's what kind of what i was alluding to is that it had the vibe of him uh i agree i need more black widow in my life too always more black widow well apparently the story is in spoiler for black widow so stand by for spoiler on black widow movie but her sister is now supposed to take that that black widow mantle yeah the title. mantle yeah. yeah that mantle and i was really happy with that actress that played that role i thought she was a standout in the movie um playing you know natasha's um sister in that movie um so I, i'm excited to see what's going to happen with her she's going to obviously have some hurdles that she might have to cross to get to you know to where she needs to be to take that mantle but yeah that we're going to get probably going to get more black widow but it's going to probably be somebody else's black widow just like now uh, uh falcon is taking over the captain american mantle um and when tom holland's ready to leave probably uh, a miles morales will step in and take over that spider-man mantle in the mcu i think at some point we'll have uh, iron, a new iron man whether it's a variant iron man or whether they're going to go and in, in, in the route of having there's that kid that was in the third Spider-Man movie or the third Iron Man movie Ooh. with Tony Tony Stark. Yeah. Now you know that kid in the barn that helps Tony Stark out in the I think Iron Man three. That kid Easter egg, now a little bit older, showed up at the funeral in Endgame for Tony I Stark. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. he's a, he's they show, they go they pan out. A lot of people are like probably didn't realize that was him. So that actor was used again, brought back. Now they may recast it down the road, but a lot of people speculated down the road <coughs> he'll, he'll resurface as maybe uh, the the protege of Tony Stark that was somebody that he's always that followed his work, followed his career, and ends up take kind of taking that mantle. And then also there's Tony Stark's daughter. He has a daughter. So oh, yeah. that's another potential. Maybe the two of them take the mantle, and that's the future of Iron Man's section of the universe and so they got a way to continue that and of course you have iron patriot who's still around so oh yeah so, you know one rumor that really makes me sad though is i've heard that there's a possibility there a lot of people are speculating that happy john favreau's character gets killed off in no way home bro bro you're not ready for that that's speculation there's nobody knows that for a fact don't don't be playing with me like that <laughs> no but see then i started to think not... about it <laughs> then i started to think about it i was like you know uh there's they got to put they have to put that tragedy in there you, you know they have to put that tragedy in there jazz it can all be you know rosy and 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 if mj spared and she survives and maybe they decide you know it's the third movie of the is a third movie of a trilogy always have a casualty Seems main, like of, a big, of a big Bro, character i i'm still like concerned about baby yoda <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like i hope he's going i hope things are going good in jedi school and yeah. you know like hopefully he's happy you know and hopefully he gets out of there before the the big night of the skywalker uh family <laughs> family uh battle yeah the family battle there before things got, got a little went south at the jedi at the jedi academy <laughs> before the <laughs> things got shut down no, uh, Grogu was playing hooky that day. I will not believe anything except that. <laughs> I believe it. And also, uh, now there's been talk that that Kathleen Kennedy wants to do more with those characters from the sequel trilogy. With some of the characters. Maybe not all of them will come back, but yeah. at some point. I could see that happening kind of the way they brought Luke back in The Mandalorian, where they may use those characters. They may not do another movie with those the, all those characters back together. But I could definitely see them appearing, like Ray showing up in a in a in one of the series. Oh yeah, uh, in in either like just like Luke showed up in, in the Mandalorian, I could see her sh popping up in some show down the road. Um, because there's going to be you know they need content. It's, the app needs content, and after they wrap up, <laughs> after they wrap up Kenobi, after they wrap up Mandalorian, after they wrap up you know the other show, then there's going to be you know the Bad Batch. There's going to be they need they need some content and maybe grogu down the road the wiser older grogu down the road a little bit older grogu down the road because they don't age very fast but a little bit older grogu down the road uh crosses paths with some of the sequel trilogy characters like maybe maybe like a ray uh that's possible we'll see bro 
Yeah, what's possible? I do want to see. I was just watching, you know, I'm watching Star Wars Visions, and they had that one episode, which was one of my favorite episodes about the um, where they go and hunt down you know, the people that go and hunt down the Jedi's. Oh yeah, yeah. and the guy's constructing the lightsabers, and he goes and sends the lightsabers off to to smuggles them away because he's making them for the Jedi's that are still around. And then they get bamboozled and tricked and everything. That was one of my favorite episodes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, man. Like, um, I yeah, recently got up on anime during the whole pandemic. Yeah. And uh, for, like, see Star Wars anime, I'm like, that was made specifically for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, though, that's a great mashup, anime and Star Wars. But anyway, that, that well, I eventually want to see that in a live action, whether it's a series or a movie, about the... Um, the, you know, the hunting the Jedi is being hunted and kind of and that'll look that'll that'll be kind of Kenobi in a way. They uh the the people that go there's a name for them that go hunt the Jedi's. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah. Um is it Inquisitor? Yes, Inquisitors, yeah. Yeah, I want to see Inquisitors and I think we'll get Inquisitors in the we'll get them in the anime animates, but I think we'll get the Inquisitors in Kenobi. It makes sense. But I would like to see something just focused more on Inquisitors like down the road would be kind of cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. Man, man, I can't wait, man. It's a good time to be alive and be in Star Wars, Marvel, and all that good stuff. It's fun stuff. It's fun stuff. Thank you, Paige. Thank you for from Facebook user, uh, our friend on Facebook, Chelsea, my cousin that came in, Billy from LA that joined us for the opener for season seven, the No Way Home op uh, Home opener. Uh, mm -hmm. No Way Home opener. I was trying to tie it into a to a sports reference. Uh, Jazz one. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me and helping me get this thing back open again. It's good to be back, man. It, man, it's good to have you back. I've missed you so much. And and we, I mean, we talk on the socials, but it's not the same as seeing you. And I, I can't wait. We're at some point we're going to redo the studio again for in-studio guests. We've, we've been kicking back, back and forth some ideas of, of the way to redo the studio to where uh, it's possible. We may go to more like a late night talk show set. Where I have a, I'm at, you know, we have a couch or a desk and I, you know, I got the computer and then we're kind of, the layout will be, we're all kind of in the same frame. Yeah. So, so that could be cool. You get to sit next to me again. I miss that. That would be like the early days. Cause we remember the early audio cast where we all sat together on the couch and then oh, I, yeah. I, I evolved this, the, the studio a little bit. And then we were across sitting across from each other. Um, so we might go back to where we're sitting next to each other again, where we're kind of doing like a talk show kind of where you're like the chairs kind of leaned over, like <laughs> oh, turned yeah. over. Turned over. Man, I would I love, think, I think I would I love that. the Thunder Pop Dome on the second episode. <laughs> pretty, pretty early on. Yeah. You, you gave it the Thunder Pop Dome and it's been the Thunder Pop Dome ever since. I love, I love the, the name, the Thunder Pop Dome. So, uh, here I had one more. Here's another one. Um, Netflix is tired Ooh. of this. It's tired of this talk. They're not going to take it anymore. They're tired of this Disney Plus talk. They're like, we're going to have a Netflix <laughs> Netflix day now, damn it. <laughs> One more thing before we go on No Way Home. This guy, uh, if a lot of people may not know this, is in, in Raiders of Lost Ark. Do you remember him in Raiders of Lost Ark? Who was he in Raiders? He plays one of Indy's, uh, like, uh, like, people that are working with him. Yeah. The, the character. He's much younger, of course. So you oh, got the shit. baby, kind of the baby face, younger version of him. But that's one of the other movies he's yeah. in that he's he's well he's known for. But that scene in the, in the newest trailer for No Way Home, yeah, it's, it is a mind blowing. Because I I looked up his IMDb, I was like, that guy, what has he been doing lately? Because he was in the you know the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Yeah. What has he been? You know, has he been keeping busy? And then I looked up, and yeah, he has been. He's been in a ton of stuff. But the one that stood out was that he was years ago was in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He oh, has, wow. He's in Raiders. So that I was like, how cool is that? He was in Raiders. <laughs> but anyway, that is my favorite uh, part of the new trailer is that scene where he he's like confused. And he's like, you're not you're not Peter. And that delivery is just so like I kind of start to feel for the villain a little bit. And it's like <laughs> it's kind of like you go back to a house where your old friend used to live and you think you're going to find your friend there. And then someone he's moved away and somebody else was there. And you're like, you're not so and so. And it's kind of. <laughs> Heart wrenching. <laughs> it was kind of heart wrenching. Like you're not my Peter. It was. I really felt some feels for that yeah. villain. <laughs> so that was like he is like what a great actor that guy is. There's something so subtle in how he delivered it as a villain. He showed range that he can be like a villain. It's kind of like in in college sports world. 
like Texas and OU, we hate each other. But if we suddenly didn't have each other, we would be lost. <laughs> like Batman and Joker. Exactly. You'd be lost without What would you do without your arch nemesis if you're a superhero? Or suddenly, what if it, someone switched them out on you and it was a different Peter Parker? And that's what's, <laughs> so it's, it's going to. But what's cool about that is it's showing this multiverse stuff is baffling some of the, the villains, too, just like it is the heroes. It's throwing them a curveball as well. It's it's changed their their day plans a little bit. Oh, I suddenly, can't wait. suddenly, less but, than a oh, month, man. I I can't wait for that. I can't wait for it. It looks so good. And then they made fun of his name and they laughed, which was kind of pretty hilarious too, because they have him say the name and then they all take it. So that that set that sequence to me was like my favorite uh, thing of the trailer. And that was in loan. They could have just given me that, and that would have gotten excited. <laughs> they wouldn't even have to show me the other stuff. I don't need any more of this stuff. That was that was perfect. Jazz one, thank you so much, sir. Everybody yeah, out so there. So good to be back. So good to be back with you. Everybody out there, have a good day. Hour second, millisecond. We'll see you soon. We'll be back coming up soon. Here's the outro. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.